Been a week today since I painted the car. I was painted last week this time, and I know I unmasked like a day afterwards, so the paint went bridge to clear. And I said I was gonna come back out here and do the flow coat a couple days later, but I didn't because of Thanksgiving holidays. But now, since we back at it, we're gonna start the flow coat. But let's first talk about the flow coat. Why would you want a flow coat? For one. To remove trash like I got up in here dirt nibs also to get it smooth because you can see the orange peel I'm not sure if you're seeing it but I got orange peel in it the, the clear done did what it need to do then shrunk up so now it's time to flow coat and a lot of guys flow coat to keep from cutting and buffing but I'm still gonna cut and buff after I flow coat I just like to put that extra protection on it. If you're gonna spend that much much money for a paint job, I think you need to protect it from the sun, the UV rays. So let's uh, round up all the material that I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna use 600 grit. I know I usually wet sand when I flow coat, but this time we're gonna dry sand. I also need to blow it off because a lot of dust and get on it. But this time we're gonna dry sand with some 600. So let me round up everything, then I cut y'all back on. Okay, we got an interface pad, and we got some 600 grit. And we're gonna be using my Bigfoot Duetto, 12 inch millimeter throw, five inch 600 grit. It's like a net. It says, I seen it somewhere dust free solution and it got a somewhat rigid pad on this already it's white but I got some old interface pads here let's open it up it's four different pads in here interface pads it also got some sandpaper attached to the pad we got two thousand grit two two thousand but we're not gonna use either one we got a black interface pad and a yellow one Black one should be a little softer. So we got 2,000 on the yellow, 1,000 on the black. Yeah, the yellow, more rigid. We're gonna use this black one here. We're gonna take this style and get off. Put our interface pad on it. The holes, no, the holes don't line up. The holes don't line up, but I still can probably put it over some of them holes that line up in there. So that'd be good. Then we'll get one of these 600 grit. Sand piece of pa uh, sandpaper. You want to make sure you got the. Got it centered because you don't want to get no pigtails with the hook and loop. Now we're going to plug our sand up, then I guess we'll get started right here. Removing this trash, and I'll show you what the orange peel look like once I hit it. I'm going to blow it off first, though. I guess we're going to mainly concentrate right here where I see a little bit more trash. We want to keep it flat. And stay away from your edges and the contours because you'll dig into it real quick and burn through. So you want to do just the flat areas. We got something else for the edges. Now you can see right off top the orange peel. 
like here, these dirt nibs. That was a piece of lint that landed in it. But you want to bring it all down. You want it to look like this here. That dull air. Shouldn't be no shine airs. Let's go a little further. When your sandpaper start getting clogged up like this here, get you some compressed air and blow it off. I gotta cut the air on first. Okay, this is what this look like. After a few passes, you still can see some ooms peel on some spots. And some trash here now. They need to come down some more. I'm gonna show you another way you can sand. You can block this, wet sand it by hand, block it with a block, rigid block, or you can also damp sand it with the same sand I'm sanding from dry sanding with. I can take that pad off, or I can take the interface pad off and use a sponge pad. I got some right here. It's 800 to 1000 grit here, but it'll work. It's a pad with a, where well it's a sanding pad with a sponge on it. Let me put a pad on here and then I'll go to the other side and show you the difference. All right. What you want to do, you want to miss some water on. You can also miss the pad. It's not going to hurt nothing. Wipe this off and see what we got. We'll cut the air on and blow it off so it'll dry a lot faster. Let's put this over here somewhere with the air hose. Now you can see that did a lot better, a lot faster. No orange peel where I sanded that. You still see some now, but I didn't sand that. So I would recommend using the foam pad, the foam pad damp sanding. The only problem is it's just gonna be water. It's gonna be less, it ain't gonna be dusty like uh, dry sanding. It's just gonna be water. But I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to damp sand, continue like that. You can see I done hit all the flat areas. I also went and hit up against here with the uh, sander. I wasn't afraid I won't cut through so I advise if you're not sure what you're doing just do this by hand. But on this area here we're gonna do this by hand. This area and this channel here. What we're gonna use we're gonna use some 600 grit. I'm gonna drop this in some water let it soak for three minutes and soften up. Or you could use a scotch brite, but I'm gonna use, since I'm already damp sanding, might as well just use this, but if you dry sanding, you can use a scotch brite. 
they hit those areas. That's all you gotta do. Scuff up the air, get it smooth or imperfections. Same way with this, yeah. You wanna keep your fingers closed. You don't wanna do it with an open hand. You'll see your fingerprints in it, the grooves in it. Now we'll wipe it down, see what we got. See what we gotta go back and touch up. Fall the orange peel and what's not flat. Now you can see what I need to go back and touch up that I didn't hit like I should. Well, like I should have. Spots up in the, this area here, but most of it flat. Let me finish up and hit all this, go back over it, and I'll cut you back on. I just finished sanding the whole entire car. As you can see it done doled off now. That's how you want it to look. No shan errors, because if you still got shan errors, the clear is not gonna stick. I had wiped it down with some fresh water also to remove that sanding paste because once I got through sanding, you might still can see some here now, like right here. I removed it so I can inspect it, make sure I got every where that I need to get. Now, we're going to finish masking because I had unmasked this or so the clear one bridge from, from when I first painted it. So I'm going to mask this. And I got a couple more things I need to mask, like the panoramic roof and up under the hood. I got to remask that. But other than that, it's pretty much masked up. So let me remask this here. Then I cut y'all back on. Just finished up with the mask. Like I said, it wasn't much the mask. I had to do both quarter glasses, the top, also a little up under the hood. But now it's time to wipe it down because we've been doing a little of everything, like wet sanding, dry sanding, with the DA masking. So I hand been laying on the panel. And it's gonna leave oil and grease. So how we gonna get that oil and grease up? This with this prep all wax and grease removal. We're gonna wipe it down. Make sure we get it up and it also get the rest of the paste up because if you don't get it up the clear ain't gonna have no surface to burn to it's gonna be sitting on top of the grease and oil and it's gonna leave fish eyes and it's just gonna be a nightmare so you want to make sure you wipe it down real good finishing up with the wipe down now it's time to spray this clear let me take it over here and show you the clear i'll be using I'm gonna be using this Grant Cell Oh My Clear High Solid. Mix this two to one. Y'all like to purchase some? Check the description out. I have it down. I also have this channel link popping up as well. Let's go ahead and set this gun up and mix this clear. Get it up.
Here's the results. Three more coats are clear. After the three coats I put on there when I painted it. I had a couple of runs here and there. This weather, I use slow hardener. But this weather is raining out there, so it's kind of cool. Instead of use standard regular hardener, but ain't no big deal. Cause I got to cut and buff anyway. Let me show you the run that I seen starting to form over here on this side. It's right along here. But like I said, it ain't no big deal because I'm going to be cutting and buffing. In about a week, I'm going to let it sit hardening up before I start cutting on it. There was another run somewhere. Oh, back here. You probably can see this one a lot better. But all in all, I think it turned out good. Y'all wanna grab y'all some of this Oh My Clear Grant 7? I had a link down in the description. Yeah, I done ran through this gallon here. Getting closer and closer to the finish line. Almost able to put this top back in because I was trying to wait till I, I didn't want to keep on taking it out and putting it back in. But I think I'm gonna go ahead and cut and buff this before I put it back in so I ain't gotta take it out, put it back in once I cut them up. So y'all stay tuned. Plenty more videos to come. Stop